So you've made a decision to improve your finances, your relationships, your business, your community. But this one thing that King Solomon warns you about this one ask, he warns his sons and he warns you through the Bible. What is it? We'll unpack it on this episode of the Wealth and Wisdom series on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? My new smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay, here from Dallas, Texas. And uh, if you've been enjoying the series, please click like and like this video. And if you haven't done so already, and you think we've been helping provide value in your life by unpacking this wealth and wisdom series every Sunday night for the next 31 weeks, please click subscribe and hit notifications. All right, so let's get into it. What is this one thing that King Solomon warns his sons, that warns Anybody that reads the book of Proverbs in the Bible, what's the one thing he warns you about? Okay, let's just get right to the chase. He's warning you about sex. <laughs> it's not about the wrong investment. It's not about the right investment. It's not about the wrong business part. It's not about the right opportunity. No, nah, man, you got to watch out for this thing called sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. So I'm not going to read the entire book of Proverbs with you, but let's take a look at a quick snippet here from Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6 to 23. All right, let's read this together. At the window of my house, I looked down through the lattice. I saw among the simple. I noticed among the young men a youth who had no sense. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house at twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in, then out came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute and with crafty intent. She is unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. She took hold of him and kissed him. And with a brazen face, she said, Today I fulfilled my vows. I have food for my fellowship offering at home. So I came out to meet you. I looked for you and I found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love till morning. She led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer stepping into a noose till an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. Whew! I mean, I've never faced any of that scenario in my entire life. By the way, even though this scripture talks about a woman in this scenario, I also want to say the same thing too with men. Ladies, watch out for men that act in this way too as well. So don't think that this is just, oh, we're just calling out women. No, we're calling out men to as well. I've seen many men act in this way. I've seen many men fool women with their words, with their talk, with their position, with their power, with their influence, and it's not gone well. So this scripture series, this whole thing about Proverbs chapter 7 applies to both men and women. And I hope that you read this in, in entirety all to yourself and you meditate upon what this means in your life. So here are my five takeaways from Proverbs chapter 7 here on the Wealth and Wisdom series. Number one, sex is a major weakness. It's a big weakness that sadly is underestimated. And uh, something that, you know, in the social media world, with everything being so attention grabbing with sex, with skin, with everything. I mean, you go on Instagram right now, you go on TikTok, they're hooking you with skin, they're hooking you with flesh. They're hooking you in with things that capture your attention. What does it say here in Proverbs verse one through seven? It reads like this. My son, keep my words and store up my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And to insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words. So if you're operating with wisdom because the operation without wisdom is operating as a fool. And what is a fool? Somebody that just doesn't know any better and is not seeking knowledge to learn more and to learn better. So you got a choice for the rest of your life. Do I want to operate as a fool without seeking knowledge and wisdom? Or do I want to be wise and asking for experience and opportunities and making sure that those are the right ones to take advantage of? Number two, there's a battle 
between light and darkness every single day. Let's take a look at what it says in verse 8 through 9. Again, it reads like this. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house. At twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. So how come this didn't happen in the middle of the day? Because there's a lot of eyeballs. There's a lot of accountability during the day. But at night, people are in their homes. People are doing their thing away from work, not with their families. And this is where sin loves to play. Just remember, every time there's a battle, every day there's a choice between choosing light and choosing darkness. But again, every day is what you focus your attention on the most is what you'll gravitate towards the most. So if you affirm with me that you want to choose light, that you want to win the battle of light versus darkness, put in that comment section below. I'm winning the battle of light over darkness. I am winning the battle of light over darkness. Which leads me to number three. Evil is never far away. It's right there. Don't think that you're so far away, you're too good not to fall. So many people think, man, you know, I got this power, I got this promotion, I got this money, I got this credit, I got this car, I got this house. Nothing's ever gonna happen to me. So let's take a look at what it says here in verse 11 through 12. It reads like this. She is unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, in every corner she lurks. Listen, I've been through relationships before I got married. And one of the things that my wife and I had told each other when we did get married, says, babe, I want you to take me <laughs> and judge me from the day you and I met going forward. If we do share with you what happened in our past, before our relationship, before I met you for the very first time, please don't hold it against me. I was lost and now I'm found. I was seeking, but I didn't know. And so babe, if we're gonna have a relationship where we're gonna be in open communication, we're gonna learn from another, please don't judge me from the things I did before you. Because now I know better. I didn't know better back then. I was a fool back then, okay? Now, from here going forward, if I still act foolish now, come after me. Now hold me accountable, because that's what the enemy does. The devil wants to complicate and confuse your situation to separate you from a relationship that honors God, to separate yourself in a relationship that doesn't glorify and magnify what God does in your life, which leads me to number four. Things may look good on the outside, man, but you know what? Inside, it's rotten. How many times, fellas, have you ran into a woman? Oh boy, she's hot. She's looking good. She's got it going on. But then you get to know her. And she's a 10. She's even a 12. She's even a 15 in your eyes. You never met a woman as hot as she is. But once you get to know her, and you realize that some of these things are existing in her life, she goes from a 15 to a 2. How many times have you experienced that? And on the flip side, how many times have you ran to a woman or a man? They may be a 3 or 5 on the outside, but man, their character, their wisdom, their nature about them, the safety and security that you feel amongst them, that three, after you getting to know them, becomes a 10, becomes a 15, becomes a 20, becomes inseparable. Because what is on the outside looks good for now, but what will continue to exist and compound and grow over time is what is on the inside. And my fifth takeaway is who, what, has your attention. Who, what, has your attention. Let's look at verse 16 through 18. It reads like this. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. The enemy looks to get your attention with your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your body, the touch, your stomach. Your, your, your lust for wanting to get involved in this sexual innuendos. So you have to be careful of the things that attack you, that hook you and grab your attention. Now, here's my business application to all of this. Some of you guys have sex, 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 relationship, relationship, relationship. I get it. What's the business application to this? You know, this has a business application because I've seen in my business career, 23 years now, and I've been to a lot of different business groups and networking parties and little conferences that are, are thrown across the world. I've talked at many different conferences and been around many different business people, 
And I've always seen, for example, and guys, I'm saying this without any judgment, but the observations I have in the business world where I see success have a major downfall is they're always smack talking their wife or the wives are smack talking their husbands. And I say to myself, oh my gosh, oh, I was just starting to get to like you. And I don't know if I can trust you now. Here's why. If they're willing to smack talk to me, somebody they don't really know about their husband or wife or sexual innuendos that are going on between somebody they observe at this conference or at this meeting, it's only a matter of time before that person starts cheating on me. It's only a matter of time before this person gets their attention taken by somebody else versus committing a long-term relationship, a long-term business relationship with me. Because I'm a big believer in this phrase. How you do one thing is how you do everything. How you do one thing is how you do everything. By the way, if you affirm with me that this is a mantra, an affirmation, and something that you want to remind yourself, put it in the comment section below. How you do one thing is how you do everything. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So what's the solution to all this? What's the, so what's the way to get ahead? A few thoughts I have. And I'll share with you a quick story and we'll wrap up. Number one, don't be a fool. Don't be a fool going to situations knowing that temptations in situations, if you're weak at it, that you're there going to power through it. Don't be a fool. Tap into wisdom. I say here, 30 minutes of fun, if you act in a position of foolishness, 30 minutes of fun can turn into 30 years of suffering. Whether, sadly, you, you get into a DOI, you hurt somebody, you damage property, whether you have a kid with the wrong person, and you got to deal with that person for the rest of your life in addition to the child that was created between the two of you, and you realize, man, I got to be at battle with this person I should not have had a kid with, and uh, that child is now going to be between parents that don't even get along, that's not operating together to raise up that child. So don't be a fool. So if you affirm with me, you don't want to be a fool. You don't want to be hooked up with the wrong guy. You don't want to be hooked up with the wrong gal. Put in the comment section below, I choose wisdom. I choose wisdom, not foolishness. I choose wisdom, not foolishness. And number two, don't be isolated. Don't be in a position where you think you can deal with the situation all by yourself. But don't be isolated. It says here in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, it reads like this. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks that they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Everyone, each one, should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. So even in scripture, being isolated and trying to take on too much without your fellowship with your brothers and your sisters is operating in a position of foolishness. In one of the most prolific stories I see of this wisdom being incorporated, because by the way, it wasn't King Solomon who incorporated this knowledge. Why? Because he ended up with 700 wives and 300 concubines. And the downfall to King Solomon was this very subject that he's talking about. So we discussed in previous episodes, previous different Bible studies, that he says, hey, it's easier to give instruction, but boy, it's much harder to actually follow through with it. So who is this person I'm talking about? I'm talking about Joseph. Joseph in the Bible. Joseph was a Hebrew who actually got incorporated into the Egyptian government. And Joseph was working right side by side with basically the king and queen of Egypt, the Pharaoh and his wife. And his wife, man, she was scheming. Let's take a look here in Genesis chapter 39, and here's how it goes. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph. He said, Come to bed with me. 
But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in his house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. And one day he went to the house to attend to his duties and none of the household service was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her husband and says, look, this Hebrew has been brought to us Make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. And let me paraphrase here. Let me fast forward. Pharaoh finds out. And he asks his wife, what happened? And basically she says, nah, man, this guy was coming after me. She's lying. So what does Pharaoh do? He confronts Joseph. He knows Joseph. But he can't let him get away with this, even if he's true and honest. So instead of killing him, he throws him in prison. And even in prison, Joseph still had God's favor because he bound himself to the wisdom and honoring God throughout this whole process. And even in prison, the prison guards trusted everything to Joseph. That, hey, listen, man, if you're under Joseph's care, we ain't got to worry about you. Hey, Joseph, knock yourself out. We trust you. This is... Your house, I guess, make yourself at home. Boy, we ain't going to bother you. We ain't going to mess with you. Enjoy your time here in prison. And fast forward, make a long story short. Please read Genesis chapter 39 and going forward because his whole story about Joseph and his life. Make a long story short. Pharaoh says, you know what? You became second in command of all of Egypt. And I give you this land. I give you success. I give you wealth. I give you prosperity. I give you a wife. And he was blessed. So with the question for you is, what are you going to do in this day and age of visual mediums looking to get your attention? It's very confusing out there. Will you run like Joseph and honor God and honor your future and honor your destiny, the dreams and goals that God has for you? Or will you get caught up? The choice is yours. So I encourage you to read Proverbs chapter 7 here as we've taken my five takeaways here from the Wealth and Wisdom series. Well, that wraps up this episode of Proverbs chapter 7, episode 7, here the Wealth and Wisdom series. I want to know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out these other videos here of the other episodes from the previous six weeks, the previous six different problems we've unpacked and our biggest takeaways to help you become more wiser and obviously more wealthier. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and continue to be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.